Yeah, okay. I think we are ready to go. So, um, yeah, first of all, uh, it's a great honor to to be invited to this exciting meeting. It's really a very nice uh, so it's a collection of symposia, and I'm learning a lot just uh, hearing the, the lectures that are presented. And uh, yeah, and this uh, symposium on the high efficiency postcard is a very challenging topic. And so I, I'm very excited to be able to contribute uh, to this uh, uh, to this particular symposium. And I'd like to thank Anita and Osman for their kind invitation. And so, yeah, so the, uh, we, have, we will be talking about former medianium that I, that we had already lectured this morning. And uh, so, but it's fortunately I'm not on the same path like Dr. Sok. <laughs> so don't worry, I'm not just repeating what he said. Some things, of course, we all, we have in common. We want to be recognized that former medianium is uh, from the optoelectronic uh, perspective, the, the best material. But as everybody knows, I mean, we need to stabilize the alpha form. And uh, so that's, it will be uh, my initial uh, uh, discussion. And then, uh, then we will see how we uh, suppress radiation as the combination, because that's really an issue with the postcard solar cells that if you use the postcard film itself, you will get very often very high luminescence efficiency, photoluminescence, and which tells you that the Fermi level splitting is excellent and that there's not much uh, going on in terms of bulk recombination. But then you, you connect those films and all of a sudden, boom, your, your, your absolute quantum yield for photoluminescence goes down and, and your voltage drops. So that, that, the reason for that is you have radiation-less recombination at the contacts. And so finally, I will show you a path to, and we have now a 35 power conversion here over 25%. I should mention this is with the uh, two, two partner labs from Korea. And so that will be, I uh, will show you the, uh, how this was reached. And so, yeah. Yeah, so uh, the, uh, this is a known problem, okay? I don't have to emphasize, I can go on, we have, it's about uh, 150, 160 degrees. You need to have stable alpha phase. But uh, the paper that is, um, I, I think, not quoted enough. <laughs> so I need to say that. Okay, it's the the uh, the pioneering work with Professor Meyer and uh, and uh, Norman Pellet, my my P our our joint PhD student. So we found out that. Uh, the uh, yeah, just adding the uh, methyl, methyl ammonium uh, cation, it, it will stabilize the former medium. You can see also from this slide that the optical, uh, if you look at the IPC or EQE, is called now, you see the, uh, the, the mixture is much better than the, the individual compounds. And, and so the reason for that stabilization is mainly an anthropic effect, not, not alone. It's uh, if you would like to form, a, say, a mixture with the uh, uh, with the uh, with the delta phase, that's energetically uh, more more expensive, and so 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 the, so you have a you have energetic value, but you have also the entropy that helps you, and uh, that's even more so the case for if you use a, a mixture of formadinium with cesium, both are yellow phase at room temperature, but you grind them and lo and behold, you get that black film. It's, it's almost like black, black magic, okay? So, but it's thermodynamics in reality. But uh, we have to realize these anthropic contributions are, are not uh, very important. So the civilization energy is not, it's t, a t times delta S. So, so depending on temperature, you can, uh, you can get into limiting stability. Yeah, and then I just mentioned that in passing, then uh, Mike Saliba, who, who was a postdoc with us at that time, he, he, he uh, came up together with Taisuke Matsui uh, with this uh, triple cation, and that's pretty much uh, was used for, is still used as a kind of a reliable standard mix 
you, if you want to make a good sale, you first try that, okay? Yeah, but um, the, uh, today we will be uh, talking about uh, pseudo halides. And, uh, and so there's less, been, uh, less has been attempted with the anions. So we know bromide, chloride, you know, we know chloride doesn't mix into the iodides. And so, uh, but uh, the, uh, some anions that, uh, for example, thiocyanate that is at the limit. And so a lot of people have tried to replace iodide by thiocyanate, but it doesn't work. It doesn't form a, a perovskite phase as a bulk material. But still, I mean, there's something amazing about thiocyanate, which is, will be the focus of my that was my, my, my uh, presentation in the next few slides, okay. And so, um, yeah, let's start with the science paper that's published. So, so that was a starting point was the fact that uh, you could stabilize the, uh, uh, the homomedinium just by a Weber treatment. So Haizu uh, Lu, who was doing these experiments in our lab in the beginning, he used methyl ammonium thiocyanate, okay, and so, so then, uh, so when, uh, so so what you do is you just, uh, yeah, let me show you what what's how you do that. You you have the, uh, uh, the you, you have the you, you spin coat the precursor solution, then you expose it to uh, the. Uh, Methyl, methyl ammonium thiocyanate, which is very quite volatile, and so you don't really have to heat it much. And then you get on the surface, you have this, this formation of uh, methyl ammonium thiocyanate, and that, that, that surface doping stabilizes the, the alpha form, okay? And so if I go back, the, uh, the uh, devices that I will be discussing now will be standard, I mean, it's just, uh, ITO tin oxide is uh, the electron selective contact, and then we have homomedinium and spiro and gold. Okay, so nothing magic there, but uh, yeah. So the discovery was that we could do the conversion; so we could stabilize this material with methyl ammonium thiocyanate vapor. But then, when we submitted our paper to the to science, the Referees came back rather harshly and said, well, you know, show us that uh, it's not a, a methyl ammonium. We, we pretend that the thiocyanate was the main factor stabilizing that phase. But the referee said, no, you have published yourself. I showed you the paper just a few minutes ago. So, uh, so show us that uh, it would also work with form amidinium thiocyanate. So, so we went back to the, to the lab and lo and behold, it did work also with former medinium. And so, so that was a surprise, okay? So then it was clear that what caused the stabilization was not the cation, the A cation, it was the thiocyanate. And uh, so the films we, we, we produced, you can see here uh, some cross-sectional images. And um, yeah, and uh, the uh, treated former medinium, there's no trace of the delta phase, you can see. It's maybe a little bit of lead iodide, but the, the reference you can see if you don't do the treatment, you have always delta phase. And the delta phase is very bad. It, it acts as a recombination center for carriers. And there are all sorts of bad things happening if you have delta form of medium lead iodide. And so, but here we didn't see any. So, so how come? I mean, how come this, this, uh, this can happen from the surface? So we explored in great detail that what, what had happened. And so, uh, yeah, so the first thing is NMR. We, we did some NMR experiments and uh, yeah, what we found was that in the nitrogen NMR, you, you got this narrowing and the spinning sidebands. This tells you that the treated, the target had a much better crystallinity than the reference. Okay, so, so that's known from NMR. And uh, did we have methyl ammonium in there? So, yes, we did a little bit. But you see, we have to blow up by a factor of eight and we get this bump here, which is the methyl ammonium. So a few percent of methyl ammonium are there. But uh, 
we, uh, we, we, we had to show where it was because we, we pretended that the methylene modium thiocyanate was actually mainly on the surface. And so what we did was we, uh, we did some uh, top students profiling. And uh, so in a nutshell, uh, the top sim profiling showed that uh, both thiocyanate and methylammonium, they were mainly in the first 20 nanometer film thickness. So penetration was, uh, was uh, just over by 20 nanometers and not further down. You can see that in the bulk, this is almost like the background. Okay, so, so clearly, I mean, this, uh, the, the vapor had only penetrated to, to an extent of 20 nanometer into the film. The film has uh, thickness is a few hundred nanometers. And so how come, I mean, how come that the thin surface layer can, uh, can affect the whole uh, film, which is much thicker? And that's not totally new because, uh, I mean, this uh, Yang Yang, for example, had shown that with these perovskites, uh, the, the ionic crystals and uh, so they, they're soft crystals. And so any cons constraint you apply like, uh, like, like uh, a, a, a sort of constraint we have here that we, we maintain the alpha phase on the surface by doing the thiocyanate treatment. So any templating will go through over several hundred nanometers. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so that was the idea that we, we would form uh, we would form the uh, the alpha phase on the surface, and uh, that this would then template the rest. And so, but we had to show that. And so, the, the, the real uh, uh, I'll show you later how the molecular dynamics simulation really opened up our eyes to to fully understand what was going on. But before doing this, uh, I. I just wanted to show you some of the photovoltaic uh, characteristics. And, and so, yeah, so the, uh, you can see here the, uh, it's the structure of the device and, and the electroluminescence uh, was turned on about 10% uh, 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 external corner efficiency. That you had very good, uh, yeah, very good photo counts. And, Voda voltage very high, so so at the end, I mean uh, the uh, the uh, co the conversion efficiencies were over twenty three percent with a firm that was really uh, to to over ninety five percent for my medium that I died. and so and so uh, yeah and uh, we we got uh, we got really good stability. This is. Uh, the operational stability test, uh, and uh, yeah, that, that is over 500 hours, and you can see there was very little degradation. The main uh, uh, metric that, that degrades is the fill factor, and so the referee asked us to explain why did the fill factor go down by, I think by by 10 or 8 percent over this uh, 500 hour. This is a uh, this is uh, the ISOS uh, norm. We have a we we are, we, are, we have maximum bow point tracking and full full sunlight on the on the film and and so yeah and so what we what we uh, attributed this uh, degradation of fill factor to was the uh, what is a well known fact the the, the infusion of uh, lithium ions. From the uh, lithium doped spiral, and uh, when you when you keep the cell in the dark, actually re you recuperate most of the loss. You see that red dot here. So these films are very very stable under operational conditions, and and uh, yeah, and uh, they uh, they also uh, withstand heating. I think I I showed you that. Let me go back. Yeah, I. Here's a test where we just we, we heated the film. It, it's after converting, after we had applied the, the vapor treatment, it was all in the alpha form. And then we, so we were heating uh, for hundreds of hours at 85 degrees. Why would we do that? Well, 
the uh, you would think that if if the delta phase is more stable, then it just takes an activation uh, step to to move the alpha back to the delta. And so heating at higher temperature, but still way below the phase transition temperature of 150 degrees, it didn't do a thing. It, we just maintain our 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 black phase. Okay, and and so if you now think about it, what you have to do to go from the uh, alpha to the delta, it's a quite a complex rearrangement. And same is true for going from left to right because you have a phase sharing octahedra and they, they become corner sharing octahedra. And so then, uh, so the molecular dynamics calculations, they helped us uh, enormously to explain. But just again, the cross section, we went through that. And so we went through that, we went through that. So, yeah. And so here, here comes our team. Uh, Professor Rodriguez is a colleague at EPFL, and she's our theoretical chemist. And uh, Palmbier is a is a, was doing the molecular dynamics simulations, and uh, he is a student of of uh, Michele Parinello, one of the fathers of molecular dynamics calculations. And so we're very lucky to have these two people here in Lausanne. And, uh, and so uh, they came up with an explanation saying, well, if you have thiocyanate, it, uh, it will replace iodide on the surface. And, and then it, it, it dis disrupts the phase sharing uh, geometry and uh, turns it into corner sharing geometry. That's uh, the effect of thiocyanate. And so the corner sharing will, will be uh, performing the alpha phase. It's like a zipper, you do the surface, it will all go through, okay? And, uh, and so here's a picture of this conversion. You, you hear the phase sharing and then you, you the, the, the uh, thiothanate promotes conversion to the alpha form, okay? Which is less stable, you see here there's a difference. But if you wanna go back, you have to go over this enormous activation energy which is a, almost one electron volt. Just, just think about it. This is 50 times KT. So you want to do this uh, at room temp temperature, you would have a frequency effect of e to the minus 50. <laughs> so, so that's uh, something like 10 to the minus 12 against you. And, and so that's why these things can be very stable. Not as stable, of course, but they can be very stable. If they last 400 years, well, you can sell this as a solar cell material, okay? So that's, uh, I, I also like to mention that the, uh, that the, uh, the, there is something similar going on. It is, they're not the only ones that have been able to stabilize the alpha form uh, with gas phase treatment. I just wanted to give credit to Niti and Omar, I know, know very well. And this, this, has, this bears a similarity to our finding. And so, I mean, I, I don't want to read through this. You can read our science paper, okay? So all very clearly explained there. So then the question came, well, do we really need, if, if, we, if we could get an access to the uh, alpha form by, by just using the material itself without having to add anything that triggers this conversion. And, uh, and so indeed recently there was some kind of a breakthrough that, uh, in, the, in the sense that uh, uh, we uh, we did uh, we did find a, a a way to do this conversion without any ad, ad, ad addition at mild at low temperatures, and what, what was the what was the approach? We just have to use a mesoscopic that iodide um, material. Here's a, a picture of this, and, and when you do the uh, you, here you have the former medinium peak, and and uh, you, the delta would show up here. Okay. So lead iodide is there in the beginning and then it turns completely phase pure uh, alpha form at mild temperatures. It's, uh, you don't have to heat over, over 80 degrees. It does even form some at room temperature, okay? So, so yeah, and so we have uh, submitted this to, this time to Science Advances and it's accepted there, it's in press. And, you can read more about it. And again, I have to give credit to Farmbier. He was, uh, and look, his boss, 
the master of MDs uh, is our co-author. So we're very proud to have Michele Parinello as a co-author on our paper that will be out soon. It will explain to you that how it happens. So, uh, so, and that's one of the things where actually the molecular dynamics calculate suggested the path first, how it happens. And then we did the experiments. Okay, so it's it's a predictive uh, the predictive power of uh, of uh, of uh, um, the uh, molecular dynamics calculation. So, um, how much time do I have left, Osman? Um, you have about four minutes. Oh gosh, so I better. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so the next thing is so the highlight engineering. And so I mentioned here some of the co-authors, okay. And uh, so this is something else. I, I have to tell you this, uh, this, uh, this is accepted as a paper by nature. And, uh, uh, but I cannot tell you, we have an embargo. I cannot tell you which pseudo halide we used. <laughs> I mean, it's very frustrating, but you'll, you'll know about it in a couple of weeks time, okay. So here we just uh, with, a, with our Korean friends uh, show the uh, the two prof professor Kims from uh, Ulsan. We uh, yeah we uh, we uh, we we treated the form amadinium with the pseudo uh, pseudo halide, and uh, this uh, did the traumatic. So two types of passivation: we passivated the contacts to the whole conductor. And we passivated the material itself. We added this pseudo halide to the starting uh, uh, solution, and so then now uh, you can see how uh, how this helped with the efficiencies and the uh, ideality factor. And and here are the values. Of, so the power conversion if it means the best we measured was twenty five, but the certified is twenty five point two, so it's above twenty five percent, and so. This is one of the few papers where, uh, where you, somebody explains how he got to over twenty five percent. So I'm explaining it to you, okay? And uh, stability was also very good. Ah, I'm at the end. Oh, fortunately, I thought I'm I'm running uh, short of time. So, so yeah, this gives me a chance to uh, go back and uh, just show you this one more time. And uh, remarkably, I mean, it's a uh, the highest uh, high voltage, which is uh, uh, 1.17 with 96% of the shock liquidal in it. Just by adding a simple anion to the solution by passivating the form amidinium spiral contact. Okay. And so, so this gives a high efficiency. I'm sure it can, can be moved further up. And so, uh, yeah, here I just want to thank my co-workers and uh, also mention this, particularly uh, Ivana Milic, who is one of the uh, organizers of this conference. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so I think that's, uh, this is a dreary day in Lausanne with the fog and they're all here. And then uh, look the change. If you have, if you can ski, you can go above the fog. 